you know, ancient Sudanese DNA is not a topic that is regularly discussed. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about an ancient DNA sample from 4,000 years ago and how much of that ancestry from this DNA sample that modern day Sudanese Nubians carry. Now, hello guys, my name is Bior and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, please be feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm and all that type of stuff. And so, like I said, we're going to be looking at the fascinating world of the genetics of Sudanese history, right? Or the history of Sudanese genetics and what exactly, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And specifically, we'll focus on the Sudanese Nubian and Arab populations. They will be the main focus for our video today because they still live in the Nubia region. Now, before I even get into all of this, so I have to give a little bit of background so you can as, so you guys can understand the people that we're talking about and the area that we're talking about as well. And so first we gotta define okay what exactly is a Nubian. And today Nubians are just an ethnic group of people who are indigenous or native to the Nile Valley who live between the fourth I mean, not the, between the first to sixth cataracts in the region called Nubia and northern Sudan or southern Egypt. And then Sudanese Arabs are people who basically live in this region, but recently they came and migrated to the area as Arabs. And, you know, you can definitely see this mostly because the Arabs are the ones who carry most of the J. Haplo groups or the people of Arabian origin. So these would be like your Shalegas, your Jalis, and then your Sudanese Nubians would be like your Denaglas, um, Mahas. I don't even know how to say some of the names of these ethnic groups, but I'll leave pictures while I'm talking while I'm talking about them. And so historically this region of Nubia has always been very diverse with a lot of interactions, intermixing going on with um, the Egyptians as well, you know obviously in the uh, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, West Asian world, but then also Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, and so you usually get people, there's the big narrative of people being a mixture of Arabs and Africans, which is a half truth. It's really people are really a mixture of not even just Arabs, but ancient people, ancient, you know, Levantine, ancient, ancient West Eurasian populations and Sub-Saharan African populations, mostly like Eastern Africans, you know? And this is actually probably the area where the mixture that created foreign African populations occurred, you know, where the mixture between Nilotic related, um, you know, people and, you know, Natufian and West Eurasian related people happen. And so because of all of this, interaction with different people this region has a rich history of kingdoms empires you know um like during going back to the interactions with ancient egypt even taking over the egyptian empire with the Kushite dynasty the 25th dynasty and then also the Krish with the christian period as well with the three christian nubian kingdoms Alodia, makuri and obatia this region is just very diverse incredibly diverse very rich history and a lot of great people live there you know and it's a lot um it's a very important area for the Sudan, for um, Sudan. And so when we look at that, the genetics, there was actually a 4,000 years old DNA sample that was obtained from a hair sample at a site called Kajuka. Now, now what was really remarkable about this sample that was found at the site called Kajuka is that it was very, very similar. It was actually described as genetically indistinguishable from early Savannah pastoral Neolithic populations that lived in Kenya. And um, you know these and these populations, these Kenyan pastoralists were likely Southern Cushitic, and they were really a, a mixture, three-way mixture between Levantine Eurasian popu related populations, East African Nilotic populations, and Moto populations. And so, and so the way that I came to test, the way that I f came to find out how much inherited ancestry that new modern Sudanese Nubians and Arabs have from this dna sample the you know I've, i basically went on a dna calculator and i modeled a bunch of different populations so i modeled it with the um kajuka uh, i modeled it with the kenyan pastoral neolithic sample the early one because it was genetically indistinguishable from the kajuka sample then i added extra uh, another sudanese nilotic sample and then i've added a couple extra eurasians and egyptian samples and you know what came out to, uh, and, and you know the way that this ancestry came out was very very interesting and so what we can actually see is that this kajuka sample or dna related to that of the kajuka sample actually accounts for around 20 percent of sudanese nubian and arab dna and what usually came out as the most common uh, ancestry is that came out as around somewhere around 30 percent sudanese nilotic populations and then 25 percent E Egyptian late period and then so you would have your around almost around 30 and somewhere between 25 and 30 percent Sudanese Nilotic related ancestry then the next would be followed by Egyptian late period ancestry 
then you would have around 20 uh, around 20 between then you would have around between 20 and 25 percent of that um kajuka related ancestry and then the rest would be like iranian neolithic and um north african and just a tad bit of west african related ancestry not something too surprising you know for a sudanese um, ancestry test and so the groups that i used to test were the the, the samples that i used to test were hafawi denagla uh, mahas and then a couple of the christian nubian samples from um cool of narti as well i also did jali and Sh jali and I also did Jali and Jagir. Now, what is very what is very important to understand about the Nubia region is that during this time, when this group, when this DNA sample was discovered, it was during the time when the Nile Valley or the Middle Nile Valley was primarily inhabited by Afro-Asiatic speakers, and this was before we had an influx of the of Eastern Sudanic speakers speaking the Meroitic languages and a couple other languages too that came to the area. And this is why I hypothesized this extra Sudanese Nilotic related ancestry would have came from this extra 20% because this Kajuka sample already would have contained some Nilotic related ancestry. But since we see some Nilotic ancestry outside of the sample, that, that means it doesn't get included as part of the sample in my model. It means that there's probably a likelihood that there was an extra additional in an insertion of Nilotic related ancestry and this was most likely characterized by Eastern Sudanic speakers who were moving into the Nile Valley during the Wadi Hawar diaspora and this was an event where Eastern Sudanic speakers who were living along the Wadi Hawar or the Yellow Nile in the western the northwestern areas of the Sudan started flooding into the Nile Valley after this river had dried up and this is where we see the domination of Nilo-Saharan speakers over Afro-Asiatic Cushitic speakers in the Nile Valley Nubia region. And these Eastern Sudanic speakers likely have their origins in Lower Nubia, just a couple thousand years before they lived in the Wadi Hawar. And then this extra Egyptian late period related ancestry most likely came from Nubians just historically interacting and intermixing with ancient Egyptians, which is not anything new. This is something that has been going on for a very, very long amount of time. Even this DNA sample, the Kajuka one, is an example of that. And so what we can see is that the mixing has been going on for millennia and it never really stopped. And guys, Long, for a long time, the Nubians and Egyptians have had many historical connections with the Egyptians colonizing almost part of the, almost half of Nubia. And then at one time, the Kushites completely taking over Nubia and establishing the 25th Kushite dynasty and establishing Egypt as a, and really, you know, and, and adopting a bunch of Egyptian cultural customs. And there was a lot of interactions with Egyptians adopting Nubian cultural customs and the same thing happening the other way around. And so when we see these types of mixtures, it shows it's evidence of these interactions between Nubians and Egyptians happening for a very long period of time. Now guys, in conclusion, this analysis, this DNA sample, and this model has kind of provided us with some very valuable information and insights on just Sudanese history, genetics, and what the Sudanese past and prehistory would have looked like. And so the Kadruka sample, described as genetically indistinguishable from the early Savannah pastoral Neolithic Kenyan Southern Kushitic speaking people, kind of indicates somewhat of a complex ancestral landscape because again, a lot of people were coming to this area, mixing and interacting with each other. With, and you know, and like this tells us a lot with the, you know, uh, amounts of ancestry inherited from this sample being around 20%, and then the remaining majority being from Eastern Sudanic speakers, such as the Meroites, maybe even some Nubians as well. When I say it was the Nubian speakers and a couple other Eastern Sudanic speakers who just came in during that time of Eastern Sudanic expansion into the Nubia region. And of course, mixing with ancient Egyptians that's been happening for over a millennia. Now, with all that said, I hope that you found this video interesting as, as interesting as I found it. I'm someone who's very into Sudanese and East African history. And if you want to learn more about what I know and my knowledge, you can definitely be sure to look at my PDF document called The Prehistory of Ancient North Africa, Populations Prehistory of Ancient North Africa and the Ancient East Africa and the Middle East, where you can understand um, where, where I basically post like detailed reports that I update you on about the ancestry about the ancestral groups that inhabited North Africa, East Africa, and the Middle East. I, you know, and I update that paper continuously all the time. So you'll always be up to the information. 
You can also join the Discord server where we talk a lot about stuff. I've taught in a lot of people about the things that I know. I've posted articles in there and also had other individuals who know a lot about Sudanese history and just African history in general teach us a lot in there. And so if you really want to learn more about this stuff, these would be two places I really recommend you going.